transportation and communication are the three biggest improvements in the last, uh, last 100 years or so. What would you do if you didn't have refrigeration? We'd be hot this morning. Yeah. Father, I pray that you bless the study of your word, that you give me wisdom in the scripture. Give us hearts, Lord, that want to hear and learn. Prepare us, our Father, for what's coming. In thy name we pray, amen. Now turn to 2 Thessalonians 2 with me this morning, please. Verse number 9. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. I honestly believe that uh, most of the preaching I've heard and study that I've done in the church since I've been saved, most people vastly underestimate the power of Satan. I honestly believe that. They really do. He has real power, folks. Real power. And it's not... Uh, it's not the kind of thing that you want to mess with. You don't want to fool with him. Uh, the Lord, uh, every time he dealt with Satan, he dealt with him on spiritual ground, quoted scripture. And uh, the reason he did is because Satan is, uh, is, a, is an anointed cherub, and he's a, he's a fallen creature, and he is, uh, the, he's probably more than the equivalent to an archangel. He's powerful. He's a powerful being. And one of his... Uh, one of his uh, one of his greatest strengths is his ability to deceive. Yeah. He's a deceiver. And uh, people today are so, are so into themselves that they uh, have a hard time believing that they could ever be deceived. Mm -hmm. They are so pumped up with their own intellect and so self-absorbed and so full of self-love and they, get, and, and they get fed this week after week when they go to their religious houses and their reverends tell them to love themselves. And so it's, so it's constant. But they are so full of it that it, uh, it amazes me at how, that, uh, how well Satan has done a job. And now when you add to that the, part, the fact the Bible said God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie and be damned who love not the truth. So you... Uh, you join the two together and you're going to live in the, the, the most deceptive time the earth has ever known. That's where we are. We're here now. Uh, I want to move along quickly this morning. I've got a lot of material I want to cover with you. As you know, this is the sixth day of September. The month of September is the, uh, is the month that an awful lot of people out there now are getting caught up in this thing that they really believe the rapture is, taking, is going to take place. Uh, the 23rd of September, a lot of them are saying that. And uh, they say something profound is going to happen in the month of September. And I've already given you a number of warnings. I've tried to tell you. I've given you a list of some of the things that they say. But I want you to understand, folks, don't get caught up in something and then be let down. Because when October shows up, if it does and nothing has happened, then it's going to be a, it's going to be a big letdown for a lot of people. And it's going to affect their faith. Nowhere in the Bible are we told to call a date for the second coming. Nowhere. That's, we get in trouble when you start doing that. But we are not children of the darkness. We need to be watching what's coming. And, and it is coming. Uh, let me give you, I read you a list the other day. I want to give you just two or three things from that list to remind you. September the 23rd, the 266th Pope will be meeting with the President of the United States on the 266th day of the year. The Pope, Francis, a Jesuit priest, the only one, first one they've ever had, and he's coming to this country, and he's going to speak to the UN, he's going to speak to the Congress. Uh, September the 17th, is, 15th rather, is going to be the 70th session of the UN General Assembly, and they are going to meet, and one of the things they're going to eat, uh, discuss is going to be Palestinian statehood. All right? A Palestinian people never has existed when Israel came into that land in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and began to turn that desert into a place where you could grow something and build something, the Arabs came in from all of the surrounding territory, and they came in there, and they came in for jobs, this, that, so forth, and so on, and, uh, and, 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 and settled. Uh, all you have to do is take Samuel Clemens' word for it, Mark Twain, who visited the Holy Land in the 1800s, and he said when he went through the Holy Land in the 1800s, it was, it was desert. 
He said there was practically nothing there. Just a, just a small scattering of tribes here and there. And the Jews were there, not in force like they are now, but they were coming into the land. The Balfour Declaration that was, uh, uh, that was uh, created by Lord Balfour, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, in the, uh, in the late 1800s, early 1900s, uh, gave them a homeland. But it was reneged upon with a white paper, and Great Britain got stuck right in the middle, and they've been in the middle ever since then. But they started coming back to the land. But in World War II, when Adolf Hitler killed six million of them in Europe, and by killing six million of them, he at least uh, gave, uh, gave some sympathy to the Gentile nations and the impetus for a Jewish homeland increased greatly. They started coming back into the country uh, as a result of World War II. And then uh, May the 14th, 1948, David Ben-Gurion stood up and announced that Israel now is once again a sovereign nation. And the first, nation, the first world power to acknowledge that was uh, Russia, of all people. And then, uh, and then uh, Mr. Truman, <coughs> to his credit, God bless him, came in and, and gave the support of the United States to Israel becoming a sovereign nation. And folks, as far as I'm concerned this morning, Israel has every right to be where they are. Amen. Every right to be where they are. The idea of a Palestinian people is a concoction, a fabrication that has been created for political purposes. Terms like the West Bank and terms like that have no basis whatsoever in fact or in history, but uh, they're being used today to further the agenda of the one world government because they want chaos over there. This is why that uh, Barack Obama and John Kerry is trying to ram this uh, Iran deal down the throats of the, uh, of the American people. And am I, am I correct in understanding that Bob Corker now has signed on with the Iran deal? Right, right. Now think long on that. Yeah. Do you know what a rhino is? I'm not talking about a rhinoceros now. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't throw off on a poor old rhinoceros. It's not his fault. <laughs> a rhino is Republican in name only. That's what the acronym stands for. In other words, get rid of Corker. Because the reason, when you, when you vote for something that you know, he, I don't know what he knows, but that Iran deal will bring war. And Netanyahu will not let his country be incinerated by Iran. It's not going to happen. So in any event, uh, the illustrious, one of the, one of the, I don't know where uh, 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 the other one will stand. I don't know what, what he'll vote uh, from the one from Maryville. But uh, right now, Corker has, uh, has apparently is going to join up with, uh, with Obama. You see, folks, this is why people are so mad right now. I didn't mean to really get into this. They're mad. People are angry. Yeah. And the reason they're angry is because they elected these Republicans to go in two, two years ago to do something to slow down the Obama agenda and to change it, and they haven't done anything. They've done nothing. And now they're joining up with Obama and with Kerry and with his foreign policy, like, uh, like uh, Corker is and the rest of them. It's a shame and a disgrace. I heard a, uh, I heard a, uh, I heard a CIA agent, CIA agent that was a former New York City police officer. Now he is a CIA agent. This is not some hey boy on hey boy corner. He said that Obama is a disgrace to this country. He said it is a disgrace at what he's doing to the police forces in America, at, what, at the tension that he's creating, and that these police officers are being shot to death out here on the job, trying to do their job. And the last one to be murdered is up there in Illinois, and there's three murderers, and they haven't caught him yet, apparently. And they're killing these police officers, and, and folks, a police officer's got a hard job. That's not an easy job. But in any event, Obama, is, uh, he's a divider and not a uniter. Right. And so we are, we're at the point now where something's going to give. And so when Pope Francis comes to America, he's going to, go, he's going to speak to the UN, and the UN has on the table of creating a Palestinian state, and then he's going to speak to the Congress of the United States of America. And God said in his word, I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curseth thee. Now, when, how long ago was it when he said that? That was 1900 B.C. That was nearly 4,000 years ago, folks. Uh, he said that to Abraham. And Abraham has been called apart for a blessing that cannot be rebuked or changed. And so if America will bless Israel, God will bless America. 
And if they'll curse Israel, then God will curse America. And you and, you and I both know in here this morning that America is not standing real good with God right now. There's a woman locked up in a jail cell up here in Kentucky who is a, a, court, a, a clerk up there. And I don't know exactly her position, but she's a clerk in Kentucky. And she refuses to issue a marriage license to two sodomites. And these sodomites could go anywhere they want to to get their married. They could be married, <laughs> if you want to call that a marriage. They could be married anywhere up in there, but they made a point to go to her personally. And of course, the, the fourth estate followed them right in with all their cameras and all of their garbage. I hope you wouldn't trust a newsman as far as you could throw one. That includes the local crowd. That includes W-A-T-E, W-B-I-R, uh, what's that other one, W, uh, whatever it is. You, you better never trust a news person. They will twist what you say and, uh, and, 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 and the process. It's part of the deception and, and we're in the middle of it. So this deal of Pope Francis coming over here is a big deal and here's why. Pope Francis endorses evolution of alien life and UFO activity as part of God's plan. I spent a good, deal of a good deal of time talking about Charles Darwin, Darwinism, eugenics, and where it's brought us to today. And I've told you how that uh, Margaret Sanger, who was the creator of Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood is the one who's selling baby parts right now. They're cavalier, laid back, uh, condescending attitude where they're chopping up babies and selling their parts. This outfit, Hillary Clinton came out just the other day and said, I support Planned Parenthood even after she knew all of this was going on. And the reason they're there, folks, is because of what's called, uh, uh, you have biological evolution, then you have social evolution. America is experiencing social evolution. And so now the Pope, Francis, the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church, 1.2, 1.4 billion Roman Catholics underneath his, uh, underneath his watch, has come out and said that there are aliens, that they've been communicating with the Catholic Church. They've let the Catholic Church know that there's nothing that they're going to teach or they're going to preach that is contrary to Catholic doctrine, that the Catholic Church is going to be the, is going to be the voice of the new alien connection with the alien world, and that these aliens may very well be far advanced to us morally, that, they, that, they're, that they're not going to have to be, many of them probably won't have to be saved like we do because they're not lost and that they've got a new gospel for the whole world to hear and that we want to get this new gospel out to people. Yeah. And uh, I'm not twisting his words one bit. Now, I don't know what he's going to say when he gets to America, but I, I, wonder, I wonder if he'd give a message like that, like that to the UN. It would, be far, it would be accepted at the UN far easier than it would be at the, at the Congress of the United States because the Congress does have a few Christians in it, yeah. I believe, no doubt. Right. But the UN is made up of every kind of a false cult on the face of the earth. Now, here's some of the messages. I'm indebted to this website because I wanted, I was looking for somebody who could just put this together for you in a, in a simple synopsis. In other words, just lay out point after point because you'll, you'll hear now when I read this, it's, I've covered much of this material in here before, but this is from fillthevoid.org. And I don't, like a, I don't like plagiarists, do you? I don't like plagiarism. What's plagiarism? It's when you use someone else's work and take credit for it as if it's your own. I don't like that. And uh, so I like to give credit where credit's due. Here are the points that's laid out in the alien gospel. This is the counterfeit gospel. Point number one, aliens teach that they are our creators. And they do, many of them teach that. In other words, uh, transpermia, they they, 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 they planted sperm, the sperm of spermatozoa, the sperm of life in this earth. They put you here. The aliens did. Aliens teach that Jesus was not the Son of God. Don't you think that's an amazing thing? That little green men are concerned with Jesus? Think about that for a minute. That's remarkable. Aliens teach that sin does not exist. So does the Church of Scientology. So does a lot of other churches here. They teach the same thing. Where do you think they got their doctrine? The there's only two spirits, folks. There's the Holy Ghost, who's the source of truth. Yeah. Then there's the unholy ghost, which is the source of all the rest of the lies and deception. They teach that sin does not exist. Number four, aliens teach Jesus did not die on the cross for the sins of mankind. Of course, that's logical. If sins don't exist, then why would he die? So he didn't die on the cross for the sins of mankind. 
Aliens teach the doctrines of reincarnation and karma. Where do you think that came from? There's a religion here that's been teaching karma for a long time. Brahmism, which became Buddhism, which became Hinduism, and Hinduism morphed itself into an American society as the New Age movement. That's simple progression. That's where you are today. Karma. In other words, you're born under a certain karma, a certain, a certain, uh, a, a certain f a fatal course of life, and you have to live it out. Aliens, along with Hinduism and the New Age movement, both teach reincarnation. What's the difference between reincarnation and resurrection? Resurrection is a Christian doctrine. Reincarnation is an occult doctrine. Reincarnation teaches that old grandpa, who was a profligate, who was chasing everything under the sun, a bootlegger and a drunkard, comes back as a monkey or a cow. He's reincarnated. Reincarnate. To incarnate means for the spirit to put itself into flesh again. The incarnation is when God Almighty became a man. See, Satan incarnate in, in uh, Revelation 13 will be the devil when he's cast out of heaven, Revelation 12, and Michael defeats him and he casts him out. Then he incarnates himself in a human being. That human being that he incarnates himself, it will be the Antichrist. And that's coming, folks, if not already. Right. We may already have the Antichrist uh, uh, on this earth, and I believe we do. And the reason I do is because I believe at any generation or any age, if you could be raptured out of this world, then the Bible says plainly in 2 Thessalonians 2, we'll see him before we go. Resurrection means, resurrection is completely different from reincarnation. Reincarnation means that you, you've been put into something. Resurrection means that he raises you from the dead. Not as something different as the one who was buried, he raises you. In other words, John's buried, John's raised from the dead. You don't bury John and raise Job. You bury, you bury John, you raise John. <laughs> That's the resurrection. In the, the aliens teach the realization of your own Christhood and the paradigm shift. Now, a paradigm shift is this. You can change positions on an issue. Uh, there's nuances of expression. I see it this way, you see it that way, okay, all right. That's relativism. But a paradigm shift is when you completely change from one position and one view to a completely different thing. In other words, the world for a long time has believed that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, yeah. God incarnate in flesh. A paradigm shift is to say that Jesus Christ is a God along with the other gods, many other gods on this earth. He's just one way of many ways. That's a paradigm shift because you've completely changed the identity of the Son of God over to something new. Do you know what, folks? Many, many Americans believe that, that the Lord Jesus Christ, if he's your God, good. He's your God, all right, that's fine. He's not my God. My God's this God. Now you get along with your God, I'll get along with my God. When those sodomites went up there in Kentucky and I heard some of the, some of the, uh, uh, the, the audio, that uh, Kim, uh, uh, Kim Davis was saying, uh, she said, I cannot marry you because of, the, because of my God in my Bible. And they said, we don't believe in your God or your Bible. I'm glad they're honest. That explains it. And they don't believe in your God and your Bible. Do you know why? Because when you pick up your Bible, the King James Bible, and turn to Leviticus chapter number 18, Romans chapter number 1, 1 Corinthians chapter number 6, 1 Timothy chapter number 1, it says plainly that a sodomite is an abomination to God. That's what the King James Bible says. So of course they don't want your Bible and they don't want your God because you can't get your God from any place else but your Bible. <laughs> you don't get your God hugging trees. You'll never know the Lord God Jehovah if you go out here and start hugging trees. Amen. Won't do it. You'll know him by the power of the Holy Spirit as he manifests him through the pages of the scripture. That's what the, the King James Bible, that's why it's so important. The aliens teach the New Age doctrine of humanism. What is humanism? Let me tell you what it is. A simple, a simple analogy would be this. Humanism is that all of the focus of creation is on mankind and that within us we'll find our own savior. And within mankind we will be able to overcome all of our problems. And therefore we will find or create the key to immortality. 
This is why people are focusing upon man and not God. We don't need God. We're God because we've got the, we've got, we've got the Godhood, Christhood in us, the spark of divinity, so to speak. That's what they believe. I don't believe that for a minute. I believe I'm a fallen creature, lost without God under the condemnation of sin. And the only one that can remove that condemnation is the one who was condemned in my place. And that's the Lord Jesus. The aliens teach that all roads lead to God. Surely they do. All religions are, 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 are viable. They all lead to God. Isn't that an amazing thing? How that an alien teaches that? And then you've got presidents that teach that? How many of you know what George W. Bush said about this very thing? I just read this a couple of weeks ago. See, I've gotten to the point now where I've got no use for Democrats or Republicans. I hope you can see that. I'm done with both of them. I am. I'm, I'm up to here with Republicans and Democrats both. I'm a Whig. <clears throat> no, not really. I'm an independent. All right. Do you know what he said? George W. Bush, and you can check me out on this now, said that uh, we're Christians, but there are other ways to God. Okay, there are other ways to God. You need to know stuff like that. What is that? That's universalism. That's any way, any, any way, anything goes. We're all climbing up the same mountain, just coming from different directions by different means. No, we're not, folks. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. Of course, that comes from the Bible. And if they have, if they have demonized the Bible, what, what, which Barack Obama did, Barack Obama made a reference back to the Old Testament scripture where it talked about mixing the cloth and what have you, you know, of your, of your body and, and so forth, and uh, trying to use that to, to, to destroy the Bible. I want you to take something out the door with you this morning, and I want you to think about this, and I want you to ask the question of anybody who, 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 who uh, says that they know the Bible and they like, to, they like to destroy the scripture. Slavery is all over the Bible. It's everywhere. Israel took slaves. Israel was enslaved. The Bible is a record of an ancient people in an ancient culture in a different world in a different time than we live in today. But I'm going to ask you a question and go home and see if you can find the answer to it. Show me one place in the New Testament, the New Testament, where you are ever commanded to make anybody a slave. Find it. You won't find it. You know why? If the Son make you free, you're free indeed. The New Testament transitions out of the law of the children of Israel, the focus upon one tribe of people, Israel, and one nation. It transitions out of the focus upon that, and it transitions into the Savior of all mankind, the Lord Jesus Christ. And under Him, and if, the next time some Ph.D. from UT who, lo, who, loves to, who loves to criticize the Bible, saying the Bible supports slavery, I've heard that so many times, you know, uh, you know the, the point is if the Bible supports slavery, who, who goes to the Bible for reference for anything? See what I mean? So uh, the next time you hear one of these uh, arrogant uh, uh, say that the Bible supports slavery, look at him and ask him, uh, would you show me one passage in the New Testament where you are commanded it's just like the thing about when you love yourself. I put this out over the radio. I put it out everywhere. And I haven't gotten the first phone call from anybody yet. Show me anywhere in that New Testament where you are commanded to love yourself. It's not in there. It's just assumed by these people because of the context that you are to love yourself. The Bible is making an observation what man does not love himself? Didn't anybody say that in Ephesians? That does not love his own flesh. It's natural for you to love yourself. So these are the things that these arrogant, condescending PhDs like to ram down your throat like you're some poor, ignorant, stupid redneck from out in the woods here that doesn't know a thing. 
Don't bother to get into the, in, into, the, into the debate with us. We are so much smarter than you are. We know so much more than you do. We are far better educated than you are. And so you, condes you, said, you, you just bow down and we'll browbeat you and lead you like a herd exactly where we want you to go. And that's exactly their attitude toward you. That's their attitude. And I'm not, I'm not uh, portraying them in a the wrong line at all, at all. They teach that all roads lead to God. Aliens teach that there is no such thing as heaven and hell. So what kind of a doctrine is that? Well, you can go in some of the biggest churches in America, and I guarantee it that most of the preaching you hear is going to be like that. Now, one of the things that they say that I find is very remarkable is that what are we going to do with all these people if the Lord comes back? Here are some, uh, these are channelers. One of them is Barbara Marciniak. Now listen carefully to what this woman says. She's receiving a message from the spirit world, from the aliens, and she's given it to humanity. Here's what she says. The people who leave the planet during the time of earth changes do not fit in here any longer, and they are stopping the harmony of earth. When the time comes that perhaps 20 million people leave the planet, at one time, there will be a tremendous shift in consciousness for those who are remaining. You know, there may be a whole lot of truth in that. Yes, sir. So what do you mean? Well, she doesn't have a clue about, uh, about the fact that the rapture is for the church of God. She's coming at, at it completely from a occult spiritual perspective, but she's being fed by somebody. All right, now the figure 20 million is an arbitrary figure. Who knows? We don't have any idea. That's just like somebody said, well, we've got 30 million, 30 million aliens in the country, you know, illegal aliens. Who knows? Uh, when was the last time they took a poll? Would ever all the illegals show up and let's, uh, you know, find who you are? <laughs> you know, who knows? But it could be. It could be. But 20 million people, that's a bunch of people. I mean, that's enough people to make an impact on a nation or the world, for that matter. But notice the thing that she put in here. This is, this is what I find most intriguing. She says, a consciousness, a consciousness. Now, one of the things that Satan has so much power in is his ability to cloud the mind, Amen. to come with a spirit power upon the mind. Folks, the, the prophets and the prophetesses, the oracles and all of that are so plentiful in the occult world, it'll blow your mind. Satan is able, he's able to cloud the mind, to give it visions to give it consciousness. And this may be, who knows, this may be one of the ways that God uses to deceive the people on this earth. But they're already giving messages out. Now, why would they do that? Why would this occultist, why would this occult person give out a message about all these people all of a sudden that may come up missing? Think about it. You know why they do it? They're preparing the people. They're preparing them. You see, the truth of the matter is, this occultist is preaching more Bible doctrine than a lot of our millennials are. <laughs> because she's saying that all of a sudden, 20 million people could come up missing. And I've never heard an amillennial or a post-millennial preacher ever preach that. They believe in a general judgment. They believe in God coming back, set the sheep on the right hand, the goats on the left hand, and a general judgment, and that's it. See, uh, but I'm premillennial. I believe the Lord's going to come back and he's going to catch his bride up to meet him. And I believe that that's a mystery revealed to the Apostle Paul. And that mystery that's revealed to the Apostle Paul is of the bride of Christ leaving this earth. And when it leaves the earth, it's going to be gone for seven years and then come back in power and glory. Revelation chapter number 19. I believe that. And I believe that what follows ensues for the next seven years is the time of Jacob's trouble. It's the tribulation period. And the earth has never known a time like that. The Lord said in Matthew 24, except those days should be short and no flesh should be left alive. So that's when the great deception settles down upon the earth. But we already see the preview of it. It's coming. If we have channelers, if we've got channelers, now what's a channeler? A channeler is somebody who goes into some kind of a spiritual trance and they are speaking, this spirit takes over, and this spirit begins to speak through them. They're channeling, see? They, they become a, a conduit of the spirit world to this world. And if these, and this is not the only one, I've got others. 
But if these channelers now are giving out the message that all of a sudden so many millions of people may come up missing, what does that say to you? That says to me that Satan knows that the time's drawing nigh. If the church is asleep, he's not. The spirit world's not asleep, folks. The spirit world's not asleep. Church is, but not the spirit world. It tells me there's coming soon. Here's another one. Channeler Thelma Terrell says, Our rescue ships will be able to come in close enough in the twinkling of an eye to set the lifting beams in operation in a moment. And over the globe, where events warrant it, this will be the method of evacuation. Mankind will be lifted by the beams from our smaller ships. Now, put that together. Does that sound like that that could be used to explain a rapture? Well, of course it could. And on and on and on it goes. So, uh, the spirit world is definitely getting ready for something to happen. I personally hope it does happen in, uh, in, this, in the month of September. I hope it happens today. I hope it happens before I'm done with Sunday school this morning. Amen. <laughs> I really do. Now, how many of you know about Agenda 21? We've talked about it before. Now, there's Agenda 2030. And Agenda 2030 is Agenda 21 on steroids. But here's the bottom line. Here's simply what it means. With all of the, all of the, the technical issues of it, here's the bottom line. It simply means that the sovereignty of this nation and every other nation will be eroded piecemeal by the UN. And that's what's happening. They want a one world government and Agenda 2030 is definitely a huge part of that one world government. When Pope Francis shows up in front of the United Nations, he's going to be preaching Agenda 2030. You know why? Because the Roman Catholic Church wants a one world government and a one world religion. And they will be the head of it. And that's exactly what's coming. He endorses all of this. He's coming. So all we have to do now is to wait and see what happens. Now, how many of you have any idea of how many UFO religions there are on earth? So what's a UFO religion? Well, you, you saw it a few years back. It's a sad case. Uh, Apple White, Apple White led 20 something people to commit suicide because there was a, there was a something behind a hail bop, bop comet up there and that was coming to rescue them and carry them off because their savior was up there. That's part of, the, that's part of it. There are, as far as we know, at least 28 and maybe more UFO religions. UFO religions. They, in other words, they are related directly with communication with alien beings up there. Now, you and I both know that when they communicate with alien beings, they're communicating with demons. There's nothing up there. This earth right here is his footstool. This is where the issue of sin will be settled. Before he creates a new universe and sends us into it, we will be changed, cleansed, perfected in the image of God with new bodies, in the image of Christ, and the, end of his, and the extent of his kingdom. There should be no end. But that's not going to come until sin is put down and it's finished and it's done away with. And the lake of fire is the final judgment for the, for the wicked. And so there's nothing up there. There's nothing up there but the third heaven. And the third heaven cannot be reached physically. The only way to get into the third heaven has to be a door. And you have to be in the spirit. The apostle John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Remember? And heard a voice say, come up hither. And when he was caught up, he was caught up into the third heaven that the apostle Paul talked about in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. In the third heaven, it's not lawful to define, describe it. It's not lawful to, to, to get into detail about it because it is the, it's the dwelling place of the redeemed. It's uh, where the saved live in the presence of God. Uh, where God lives is where God has always lived from everlasting to everlasting. There is no place. There cannot be a place. If there was a place, the place that was there before God. God needs no place. He dwells in his own essence. He's from everlasting to everlasting. The only one who needs a place is a creature. And the place is created for creatures like us. And the new Jerusalem comes down from God out of heaven. And that new Jerusalem is the bride in Revelation. Shows you how things change. It's the bride and it's the dwelling place of the saints. Streets of pure transparent gold, walls of jasper, gates of pearl. 
It's a beautiful place. But it stays right above the earth, right above it. And the Bible says the kings of those that are saved on the earth walk in the light of that new Jerusalem that is right above us. Notice that it is Jerusalem. The Bible says that Jerusalem which is above is free and it is the mother of us all. There is an earthly Jerusalem. In Revelation chapter number 11 it's called Sodom and Egypt. And the two witnesses that testify against the Antichrist can't touch them. But then the Bible says God removes his spirit, or that's what we understand it to mean, allows them to die, and for three days their dead bodies lie in the streets of Jerusalem. They hand gifts to each other. They rejoice. They shout. They jump up and down. Why? Because they finally feel like they have overcome a power that they thought was greater than them. But then after three days, the Bible says a voice speaks from heaven and says, Come up hither. And Moses and Elijah, if that's the two witnesses, and that's who I tend to believe it is, but I wouldn't argue with you about it. But Moses and Elijah have their heads popped back on and up there caught to meet the Lord in the air. And then the Bible says when that takes place, when they're caught up, Revelation chapter number 11, the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. That takes place right smack in the middle of the tribulation period. What does that mean? That means that the sovereignty of earth now has shifted once again to its creator, yeah. the Lord God himself. And that when he comes back to this earth, he will come back and take what rightfully belongs to him. Yeah. For the Lord Jesus is coming as a man of war, Amen. as the King of kings and Lord of lords. But that new Jerusalem, which is above, which is free, which is the mother of us all, is the very essence of the, of the New Testament church. That new Jerusalem, which is above, free, the mother of us all, is the, is the place where the saints of God are going to go uh, and be with the Lord, but doesn't mean ever, forever, for eternity, but that's where they're going to be in eternity with the Lord when the Lord Jesus comes down because the throne of God, the throne of the Son of God, will be in Jerusalem, and that's the only light it'll have is when His glory shines throughout that new Jerusalem. And it'll be a remarkable, marvelous thing. But when that new Jerusalem is in heaven, with its glory shining down on the earth. The devil, the beast, and the false prophet will be in the lake of fire, screaming throughout eternity, along with the wicked dead that are judged in Revelation chapter number 20 at the great white throne judgment. I saw the dead. I saw the books were opened. The dead stand before God, small and great. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of the things that were written in that book. And if their name was not found written in the Lamb's book of life, they were cast into a burning lake of fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's a horrible thing. That's a horrible conclusion to a man's life. This is why it's so important that when you're coming down to what we're talking about here this morning, the book of Revelation, the end time, these demonic messages coming from demons, this, this communication from wicked spirits, it's not a game. When these two sodomites walk into this into this into this room up here in Kentucky and tell this, this, this Christian lady, we don't believe in your Bible and we don't believe in your God. Yeah. And now they've got the full force of the United States government right down behind them. They've got the Supreme Court of the United States of America, five to four vote that comes down right behind them. Amen. And it's not going to stop there. There's a judge out there in Oregon right now, a judge in Oregon that has refused to... Uh, to uh, I don't know what the capacity was to issue a marriage license or perform a, a same-sex marriage or whatever was related to same-sex marriage, somehow or another. This judge out there in Oregon or, or Washington State, I forget where it is, somewhere out the Pacific Northwest, this judge has refused to have anything to do with a sodomite marriage. This is just the beginning, folks. It's just now starting. It's just now starting. You will watch your country be defined before your very eyes in the next few months and few years. Here's what I heard up there in Kentucky. I heard a man who, who was a local up there in Kentucky. I heard the, speak into the camera, and he said, he said, I can't believe this. He said, my mother and my father would roll over in their grave if they knew what was happening. All right, and he's probably a good man, probably a good Christian man. Uh, probably a decent man, works every day, takes care of his family. But here's the problem. If you are so blind and so ignorant this morning that you cannot see this coming and have not seen this coming, 
there is a bad, bad problem going on. And I was talking to a lady the other day, and she was talking to one of the local pastors, and she mentioned something about CERN, Switzerland, to that pastor. She talked about some of these other issues I've been talking about, and he didn't have a clue what she was talking about. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that I watch for your souls. If I'm taken from this earth today and I'll never see you again, I want you to understand, your blood is on my hands. And if I have discharged my responsibility to you and I have, I have warned you week after week after week. Some of you walk out this door and you go home and you turn on, uh, you turn on Andy Griffith and you forget it. You have no concept whatsoever of what I'm saying. You think it's just the rantings of a crazy preacher. I've been warning you week after week after week, there is a vicious devil coming. That vicious devil has manifested itself in Kentucky. That vicious devil will manifest itself over and over and over again in this country. The liberal will kill you. I've told you before that if they'll kill a baby in its mother's womb, they'll kill you. They'll kill you. They're not playing games. These people want to subjugate you, take your freedoms away from you. For now, because there are so many in the country left, for the time being, they want to keep Christianity, quote unquote, locked within the walls of this building. They don't want you to have a voice in your culture. They don't want you to have a voice on the job site. They don't want you to say anything out there about how they're living. They want you to, they want you to stay locked up inside this building for now. The time will come when they will take absolute power and authority over every living thing in this country. And when that day comes, you'll find out what that bumper sticker means when it says coexist. You'll find out what it truly means when they say inclusive, progressive liberal. You'll find out when they come and take you away if you disagree with the pronouncements of the federal government. Unless something changes in the federal government, and this is my opportunity to tell you, and I'm telling you, unless something changes in the federal government, your freedoms are gone because you're watching it in Kentucky right now. Uh, Fox News, that's supposed to be the great champion of conservatism in this country. I warn you, do not trust Fox News. In the latest uh, iteration of Fox News, they were talking about Kim Davis up there in Kentucky. And almost to a man, uh, they were saying, well, she needs to obey the law. That if these are her convictions, fine, but she took an oath to, to, to uphold the law of such and such a place, and so therefore, she needs to, 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 uh, to, to, to keep the law, all right? And then one came back and said, well, what about uh, Huckabee, for example, and some others? Huckabee, Rubio, uh, uh, Santorum, and there's another one, Cruz, Ted Cruz. These are four that I know of, and you may know of more, presidential candidates that have come out plainly and said she has a right to her belief as a Christian. And if she cannot practice her faith in the job site, then she has no faith. If you can't practice what you, in other words, the state of Kentucky, the Commonwealth of Kentucky, should be able to accommodate you in your faith to be able to do your job and allow this government to progress on and do its thing. But here's the problem. The Commonwealth Kentucky does not have the last word. It is the federal government that has the last word. And the people of Kentucky may take them a while to wake up and understand that they are no longer in control in their state, that their, gov that their governor is nothing but a figurehead, that it is the federal government now that has taken the reins and on authority of the Supreme Court decision that two males and two females can com comprises a marriage. I don't know about you, but when I see two men kissing, that is a offensive, that is as offensive to me as it can possibly be. It goes against everything in my soul. And yet I'm supposed to roll over and accept it. Yet I'm not supposed to say anything that might offend one of them. Are you getting it? You understand that all this hate crime legislation is all one-sided. All one-sided. You understand 
that there is an organized, orchestrated effort to shut you up and put you away somewhere because whoever, the movers and the shakers in this country are taking, they're taking your freedoms away from you. It'll come to the point where you can't say a word. It'll be branded hate speech and you're yeah. gone to jail immediately. Yeah. That's what's coming, folks. Right. It's already here. Yes, sir. I know you can. I know you can get into a big argument about that, and I understand that. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, the Civil War should have never been fought to begin with. When you have American against American, that's a horrible thing. But but uh, but here's something you might want to check out. Uh, just go check this out on your own now. Ulysses S. Grant, who was the commander of the Army of the Potomac, you know, the one who Lee signed at Appomattox. Find out if he owned slaves after the Civil War. Yeah, find that out. Find out if he owned them after the Civil War. You say, what's the point? The point is this, like our brother mentioned. There's a whole lot more in the Civil War than simply slavery. All right? A whole lot more going on. And it should never have been fought to begin with. And what they're trying to do now is to dig up something with a Confederate flag and create controversy. Yeah, yeah. That's a Hegelian dialect. Thesis, antithesis, synthesis. They want to maintain, they want to keep this, that this is why the, all this against the police. Black Lives Matter, why they're trying to kill co police officers, is to keep this stuff stirred up. And, that, and they're doing a pretty good job of it. Yeah. Listen, I served four years under that flag right there. Right. Four years. And uh, I don't know if anybody's more patriotic to that flag in here than in, in this country. The, the, the fact of the matter is, if a man's never been in the military, don't get in my face and tell me how patriotic you are. You may be. I'm, that's all fine, well, and good. But don't run me down for what I might believe. You see what I'm saying? I served four years under that flag, four years in the military, four years away from home, and proud of it, and honorable, and, and, and because it's my country, it's my nation. I'm not a Confederate. I'm an American citizen. Amen. But I got enough sense to know when the devil is trying to stir up a bunch of stuff that doesn't need to be stirred up. And when he, when he does that, he's hurting a lot of people. And that's no good. Yes, sir. Fifth chair of the anointed one. No. No, sir. No, sir. Does, no, where does it say he lost that anointing? This is why I said at the beginning, Lucifer has power. Of course, now, if you call him Lucifer, you've got to be careful of these new Bibles and new dip Bible dictionaries and these new churches today because they've confused Lucifer completely. And, uh, and uh, you know, with who Lucifer is because it's a Latin word. But Lucifer is definitely, I believe, the devil. And I believe he has power. And I believe you're beginning to see it. I believe you're, you're really beginning to see the kind of power that, uh, that Satan has. All right, well, we've run out of time. We'll pick it up again next week. How many of you in here this morning realize that, uh, that there's something in my soul, that there's, some, there's something going on inside me? Yeah. I'm, uh, I, I've been at this a long time, folks. I know churches that have little revival meetings they schedule twice a year. They have their little revivals. And then they go to the polls and vote for a baby killer. Yeah. That's right. That's right, I have a hard time living with that. I can't swallow that one. I can't swallow it. It makes sense in the sense that their God is their belly. They separate their belly from their religion. And uh, that's, where, that's, why we're, that's why we are where we are today. And because the pastors wouldn't say anything about it. And so they said, you know what I'd like to see happen at Temple Baptist Church? You want to see a real revival? Let me tell you when a revival will come to this church and every church in this country. 
when men get up and come down to the pulpit, get down, get down on their face and say, Lord, God forgive me for voting for a baby murderer killer. God forgive me for voting for my belly. God forgive me for, for supporting this, this, uh, this genocide that's going on in our nation. God forgive me for being such a hypocrite. I'm talking about the pastors and the chairman of the deacon board and the missionaries and the elders and the whole stinking nine yards. There'll be no revival. That's why you don't see any revival because blood is dripping from their hands. You say, well, preacher, you can't vote for the Republicans. Not now. Then it's time to start something new, isn't it? <laughs> if we've got 50 million born again believers in America, you could have a voting block to put anybody you wanted in office. You could. Barack Obama got 65 million votes the last election cycle that put him in office. 65 million. If you got 50 million born again believers in this country, you've got probably 30, 40, 50 million that are on the fence and they'll go whichever way feeds them the best. And you'll pull a, you'll pull a bunch of them in and you could put a Christian in office in America that would get rid of this Supreme Court when they die out and get rid of them, get rid of Elena Cagle, get rid of uh, Sotomayor, get rid of, uh, of uh, uh, what's her name? Once 120 years old. Uh, get rid of all of them but, uh, and, and put some conservatives in office. <laughs> folks don't realize that when they vote for a, when you vote for a president, folks, you're voting for the man that's going to be putting the Supreme Court in when they retire. Yes, ma'am. Oh, absolutely it is. It's called the White Brotherhood. Oh, they love this stuff. It's the White Brotherhood. You remember I've told you before, that's the most racist bunch on the face of the earth is that crowd at the very top. They despise black people. They despise colored people. They despise Orientals. They despise anything that is not of their stock. They are that Aryan that Hitler was trying to breed. And uh, they're there, if you don't believe me, you need to you need to check into it. We've run out of time. We're gonna we're gonna we're running way over. Let's have a word of prayer and we'll let you go. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I can't handle the church, much less that. I'd, I'd lose what a little bit of hair I got left. Brother, will you just